Today we're going to talk about motion, position, velocity, and acceleration. A position function gives the location of an object at time t, and it's usually written as s of t, x of t, or y of t. A velocity function is the rate of change or derivative of the position function, usually v of t, and the velocity is in units per time. Velocity is positive for upward or rightward motion and negative for downward or leftward motion. Acceleration is the rate of change or derivative of velocity, usually a of t, and the units for this are units per time per time, or units per time squared. Initial position is the starting position, so plugging in t equals zero into the position function. Initial velocity is the starting velocity, so plugging in t equals zero into the velocity function. Speed is the absolute value of velocity. Displacement is the net change in position. The formula for displacement is final position minus original position. Total distance, total distance traveled by the object in the time interval. You must take into account all direction changes. Find the time intervals for when the object changes direction, then add the absolute value of the displacement for each interval to find the total distance. What's the difference between displacement and total distance? For example, if Dan moves three units to the right, and then five units to the left, and then two units to the right, Dan's displacement is zero because his final position matches his starting position. But the total distance he traveled three units to the right, five units to the left, and two units to the right. So the total distance he traveled was 10 units. For number one, if my position function is t cubed plus t, we're gonna find velocity and acceleration. Velocity is the derivative of position. So three t squared plus one, and then the derivative of velocity is your acceleration, and that would be 6t. Use the position function of an object moving on a horizontal line for the following. Distance units are measured in feet and time units are measured in seconds. What is the initial position of the object? Initial position is your starting position when you plug in t equals zero into the position function. In our initial position, or s, of zero, s sub zero, either way it can be written, is 24. Our units are feet for position. What is the velocity of the object at t equals one? So first we're gonna need to find the velocity function, which is the derivative of the position function. And then we plug in one. The units for velocity are units per time, so feet per second. What is the speed of the object at t equals one? Remember, speed is the absolute value of velocity, so you just wanna find the absolute value of v of one. So absolute value negative 24 is 24. Same units. What is the acceleration at t equals one? Acceleration is the derivative of the velocity function. And then I'm gonna plug in one. Just so happens 24 is our answer for this one. Feet per second per second, or feet per second squared. When is the object at rest? Object at rest means the velocity is zero. You're not moving, so make the velocity function equal to zero. We have a quadratic function set equal to zero, so we're just going to solve by, let's try factoring. The GCF is 24t. So the object is at rest using zero product property uh, at t equals zero, and then also at t equals three over two. So at zero seconds and three halves seconds. When is the object moving right? Rightward movement indicates a positive velocity. 
So when is the velocity function greater than zero? We could do this algebraically, but we have already solved the two t values that make v of t equal to zero. So I'm going to put those on a number line and then just check the intervals for positive or negative velocity. To test this, I'm going to plug in v of negative 1. I'm going to plug in v of 1 and v of 2. Just so I can get the sign to see if the object is moving left or right. Now, I know you may be wondering, uh, do we even have to look at negative time? Because that doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense. But we're not in physics, so we will deal with negative time if they want us to. Um, oftentimes, the problem will say t is greater than or equal to zero, so then you don't have to worry about that. But if they have not specified, we're going to work with negative time as well. This result is positive. This result is negative. And this results in a positive. So to the left of 0, we are moving right because our velocity is positive. Between 0 and 3 halves, we're moving left because our velocity is negative. And between 3 halves and infinity, we're moving right because the velocity is positive. When are we moving right? From negative infinity to 0, 3 halves to infinity. When is the object moving left? We already determined that interval, 0 to 3 halves. When is the velocity equal to 54? So we're going to take our velocity function and make it equal to 54 and solve. Is this factorable? Unfortunately, it is not, so we're going to need to use the quadratic formula. If you were to use a calculator to evaluate these decimal approximations, you would get 2.049 seconds and negative 0.549 seconds. The velocity is equal to 54 feet per second at t equals 2.049 and negative 0.549. What is the displacement between t equals 0 and t equals 2? Remember, displacement is final position minus original position. So I want to find out what is my final position and what is my original position. I believe we already found s of 0, also known as s sub 0, and it was 24. Our displacement is negative 16 feet. What is the total distance traveled by the object between 0 and 2 seconds? This is another reason why the velocity number line can be helpful to determine when we're moving left and when we're moving right because we have to take that into account for total distance. Our interval is 0 to 2. We'll evaluate the displacement of the leftward interval and then make it positive. We'll evaluate the displacement of the right moving interval and take the absolute value and then add those distances together. Displacement for the pink interval would be s of 3 halves minus s of 0. Remember, we're absolute valuing that for total distance. The displacement of the positive or green interval would be final position, so s of 2 minus s of 3 halves, and then we'll add these positive displacements together. We've previously evaluated the initial position, or s of 0 and s of 2, so all we need to find is s of 3 halves. If 
For most motion problems, you'll be allowed to use a calculator, so s of 3 halves is negative 3. Now we're going to plug it in to find the total distance. The total distance is 38.